Today I'm at Bespoked, which is the UK's largest handmade bike show. It's a chance for frame builders to showcase their artwork. And if you like CNC machined aluminium frames or hand rolled steel tubes or even additively manufactured 3D printed tie parts, then this show's for you. So stay tuned and see if we can find some tech. So I'm here with Ralph from Hoon Cycles, which means chicken in German, right? Because you love to live in the dirt and so do chickens. Is that right? <laughs> and, and, and still they look elegant, right? Exactly. <laughs> and it, the epitome of elegance is this bike behind me. Tell me all about this. What is it and how have you made it? Okay, so that's uh, the Mohun uh, 129. It has uh, 129 millimeters of rear suspension and we run a 140 millimeter intent fork on the front. Um, and it's a single pivot uh, with a yoke, so to get a small amount of progression. Now it's always lovely to see a full suspension at a handmade bike show and the fact that it's titanium as well is a plus, but the parts have been additively manufactured, is that right? So That's can you tell me a bit about what you've used and why? So we have selective laser melted uh, head tube and uh, bottom bracket and uh, the yoke for the rear suspension, dropouts and basically all connection lugs, they are uh, additive manufactured to get uh, like integration and, and, and fast frame building, right? And yeah. a nice design, of course. So you've got a kind of lattice structure in there to make it stiff and light at the same time? Yeah, you can see we have small wall thicknesses and then yeah. we have a lattice structure inside. We have integrated welding material. So I put the tubes, I just weld around, don't need to add uh, material. Yeah, and this, this has given a really beautiful seamless welder. I think it's gorgeous, but you've also got some cable routing in there as well, which I assume wouldn't be possible with a mold at all. So. Yeah, it saves it saves uh, a lot of uh, time for the builder, so you can build more bikes, basically. What have we got here? So here we build uh, a very big bike for a very big guy. So he's uh, two meter ten. <laughs> yeah. So and he wanted to have a bike which is actually looking proportionally nice. So if you would build a twenty nine er for him, he would have a very huge uh, head tube, and that thirty six inch uh, wheels actually makes the proportions nice for him. So we have a intent fork, custom made intent fork from Cornelius, which has uh, 80 millimeter uh, of suspension. Wow. Um, we have quite some filament printed parts going on, like the yoke, this yoke here, uh, the dropouts. Can I see a light built into the back here? Yeah, it's integrated light into the dropout. Amazing. And an in this Ingrid rear derailleur is lovely. It gave us a bit the idea of the color scheme. And then we have custom bags from uh, Witzlingers. So I'm here with Gavin today from Coal Bikes. Tell me, what have you got going on here? So this is uh, our full suspension 29er. It's an enduro, free ride, park ride, do whatever you want sort of bike. It's a Reynolds steel, so it's 853-853-631. Use 631 in the seat too for the malleability. It's just easier to work with and put this bend in. Use 4130 in the seat stays in these uh, uprights and then Reynolds 853 chain stays for a little bit more stiffness. I'd like to build in steel just because, you know, it's easier to get in this country as well with Reynolds and that, but also I think the lines and that lend themselves to making steel bikes. What drew me to the stand is the fact that it's not just your usual single pivot, you've gone for something a bit different here. So tell me about the linkage here. Right, so the linkage is, I've, it's been designed with a guy called uh, Alex Desmond. He's got a company called Desmo Racing. He's pr quite prolific in the industry, working on loads of the different bikes. And I approached him and said, this is the style of bike I want. These are the characteristics I like from a bike so he came up with this fully floating shock system a little bit similar to the old Trex but this one has got slightly different leverage curves and it's a little bit more pedal efficient but the the main interesting aspect of this is it is constantly active so even while braking over any aspect of riding it's constantly working and it just gives you so much more confidence i've also spied a little flip chip on there what's going on there yeah so the flip chip is just basically because I don't offer custom geometry in the builds, I like the customer to be able to at least have some sort of, you know, adjustability in it. So this will run 160 travel in 29, but in a mullet setup with a flip chip at its lowest point. 
it's 170 travel. But then also there's another flip chip that comes with the bike, which is a like a, a medium high and a medium low setting, which then you've got a range of a full degree in head angle, which is 64.5 to 63, which is, you know, quite a broad, in my opinion, area. So, and you know, it just gives customers an option to just be able to adjust and tune the bike to the style. So I'm here with Mark from Prover Frames, who obviously caught my attention with this gorgeous green anodized titanium hardtail frame here. But then I noticed it's pinion, and yep. this is your own bike, I understand. Yeah. So tell me, why have you done this? Uh, so I've built this particular bike for myself because there's a new dropout design on the back. So I need to go through the development process of proving that out. And I hadn't built myself a new bike for about a year and a half. So <laughs> it, it was, was about time. time, yeah. <laughs> and I wanted to experiment with some different geometry ideas as well. So like slightly long, longer wheelbase, I've made the custom one piece bar stem to shorten like only 25 mil stem length so I can lengthen the front of the bike. Just an opportunity to try it. Every time I build myself a bike, it's an opportunity to try some new stuff. There's some unusual shapes here. So am I right in thinking that there's some additive manufacturing yes. going on here? Yeah. yeah so, so what have you got? We were the, one of the first companies in the world about six years ago to use additive manufactured parts welded into a structure. And we've been using them in our production bikes for more than five years. The dropouts are completely unique to our, our frames and they're additively manufactured in titanium. The bridge that's holding the pinion gearbox, that's additively manufactured and has internal funnels for the dropper ports and the brake ports and just and allows a much shorter chainstay length than the conventional pinion design. Right. So. And also your handlebars look pretty unusual to me. Is, yeah. that, <laughs> is that a 25 mil stem you've got going yeah. on there? Yeah, so it's an additively manufactured stem section that was post machined after printing and then put into a fixture with the bars and then TIG welded together to form a one piece. Amazing, faster. so you've got some tie handlebars there yep. and you've a titanium stem. stem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm here with Ricky from Feather Cycles here, who I'm quite familiar with your work as a road designer, and you've got quite a distinctive, clean, beautiful look, I've got to say. And like a dirty little secret, this was hidden right at the back of the stand. It was, yeah. Because you've big, decided to build a mountain bike. So tell me a bit about this process and how it's been different from your road biking. So it's quite a lot different. Um, there was a lot of questions to be asked. So I've, I've actually approached a couple of other builders. Billy from Howler gave me a lot of advice and sold me some parts that he actually uses and designed on his own bikes in, in one way to make life a little bit easier for myself because I don't know a great deal about mountain bikes. It's not my background. It's not something that I've ever done before. What I like is you've built this almost like a piece of art and you've tried to purposely uh, challenge yourself. So you've gone for this curved top tube here. Tell me, how difficult is that? It's pretty tricky because there's no way to hold it in a machine to miter it or anything like that. So it's all got to be hand mitered. Um, just using a half round file. The other thing as well is I did it on like, I had to buy the tooling specifically just for this bike. Um, so it weren't very cost effective. Ran it through the rollers, which you get like, which you use to achieve that bend. Um, and they, and the tube was twisting at the same time as like bending. So it was like, I had to watch out for that and then roll like two meters worth of tubing just to get like one straight piece that was the straightest part of the, you know, the whole yeah. tube. So yeah, there was, it, that was like probably the most challenging bit. Um, no, it wasn't. So like the most challenging bit was mitering these um, seat stays along the length of them. Um, mm. That was really difficult. It took a really long time to do that. I mean, on a road bike, I'd probably do that in about 15 minutes per stay, um, just by hand. And on this one, it was probably maybe two and a half hours, just, wow. just taking a little bit off at a time and checking it and taking a bit more off. I've noticed this. This is um, obviously you okay. usually use a clean seat clamp on your road bikes, yeah. but you can do that on this because of the cluster. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, yeah. so, but I still wanted to do something that was a bit more interesting than just using a seat clamp. So it's a brass barrel, um, which I machined and mitered and drilled out, threaded. I saw this years ago on a Superstar BMX frame. So it's just something that I've like sort of brought in from my BMX background to and, and I've always wanted to use it on a bike, but I've never had the right bike to use it on, really. Um, I just don't think it's like a clean enough look for the road bikes that I build. So this was like the perfect opportunity, really, to sort of just try it out and see see how it went. I was a bit worried that we were, because I know there's another bike company, like a bigger bike company, I later found out that used this method to clamp the seat post. Um, and it, they were having problems with them crushing the seat post and then like the drop was not working properly. 
Um, but we found with this that we can like crank that up to 10 Newton meters and it's absolutely fine. So I'm here with Gary from Auckland Cycle Works and you've got not one prototype, but two here. Yeah. So tell me about these, what have you got? Um, this is the Mara. This is, a, at the moment it's got 170 mil fork, Woof. but I was racing at Tweedlove just a couple of weeks ago with 190 mil fork and about 175, 180 mil at the back. Wow, so you've got a midpoint idler here, is that? Yeah, yeah. so the idler is halfway along that linkage yep. and the way it works is through, so look at the shock stroke, so that's about halfway through the travel. So as the bike moves to about halfway through its travel, the point between that axle, that axle and that axle goes from being kinked to being straight. So for the first half of the travel, it's got a drastically rearward axle pass. And then for the second half of the travel, which I'm not going to be heavy enough to compress, that axle point pretty much stays where it is and then the suspension just moves vertically. So it's got a 45 degree stroke well, axle path for the first half of the travel and then rapidly transitions to a vertical axle path for the second half. So as you're riding light and trying to carry speed, it's got all the benefits of the rearward axle path. As you're getting ugly and wanting to hike and thrutch the bike around, then the axle path is vertical so it doesn't continue to lengthen. And presumably you've taken everything you've learned from this over to this, which is more of a semi-prototype uh, production, is it? Yeah, this is... I wanted to experiment with how I go about commercialising this and make it into a bike that somebody's actually going to want to buy and have pride in, in owning. This one is similar to this in that the linkages move the same way. So the instead of the high idler being halfway along the lower linkage, yeah. the bottom bracket's halfway along the lower linkage. It's the same as this, but it's less travel. It's less extreme in terms of its characteristics. And then if that's the bottom bracket piece there, then I've got tuning options so I can fit it that way in the frame, that way in the frame, that way in the frame, or that way in the frame. <laughs> so hopefully one of those four ways, oh, and there's a flip chip in there. So one of those eight configurations should be sweet. Wow, I've been absolutely spoiled for choice on tech here, so much so that I've had to leave a lot of brands out because there's too much tech here. But what's great to see is that, you know, five or ten years ago, handmade bike shows were all about just steel hardtails. And these days, we've got aluminium, titanium, additive manufactured parts. Even the paint jobs have got more complicated these days, and it's so beautiful to see. So uh, let us know down in the comments below what's been your favourite and why and give us a big old thumbs up if you want us to continue going to shows like this.